Welcome to the all new season four pitch off of Greenlight Maine. Over six episodes, you'll watch our 13 semifinalists give it all they've got to earn their spot in the Greenlight Grand Finale and compete for the $100,000 cash prize. Now, let's meet our panel of judges. CJ Kinney, MBA, President Kinney Consulting. Dmitry Markovich, Assistant Professor of Marketing at the Business School of the University of Maine, Orono. Deb Newman, President of the Bangor Regional Chamber of Commerce. Skip Bates, Senior Vice President of Main Street Banking for Bangor Savings Bank. Marge Barker, Chapter Chair of SCORE Bangor. Dr. Brian Walton, CEO of the Acadia Capital Management Opportunity Zone Fund will be our commentator this morning. And I'm your host, Julene Gervais. So let's get this pitch off started. This episode of Greenlight Maine is brought to you by Dream Local Digital, helping businesses plan, promote, and dream local. Charlie was working in, in a sale loft when he was in high school and pulled out literally drunk out of the trash can and, and made himself something. And then from there, it slowly but surely became the business that we are today. It was about taking a product that would have otherwise gone into a landfill and repurposing it into a product that someone could use every single day. James Moran from Flow Fold. Welcome to Greenlight Maine. We are a worldwide brand. And there's no delusions of grandeur here. I'm not here to tell you that we're a billion dollar company. But we are not the same small wallet company on Peaks Island, Maine. We are coast to coast across the US, and we're in eight countries internationally. Flowfold is a Maine-based manufacturing and retail company in the outdoor industry and lifestyle markets. Our products are made from some of the world's most durable, sustainable, and technically advanced fabrics. As a result, our products are lighter, stronger, and literally guaranteed to last longer. It doesn't matter how passionate I am, passion doesn't equal profit. When you're thinking about feasibility, for me, it's very simple. Is there a market and is there demand? Is there re return on your investment? And is there differentiation? Now, when you're looking at our market, even if you're just looking at the outdoor segment alone and the target audience that's 25 to 35 years old for us, according to the uh, Federal Bureau of Economic Analysis, that's a $141 billion addressable market. We only need to capture a very small portion of that. And we're operating in this market with a 50% gross margin and 60% revenue growth year over year. Wow. And I'm really proud to say that even though we're bootstrapped, we're EBITDA positive. Now, that's because we do have differentiation. Our competitive advantage is that we own both the manufacturing and the design under one roof. That means we're faster and more agile when responding to market trends and customer demands. Is that scalable and is it innovative? And the answer is absolutely yes. We've innovated a process, and we are planning to invest almost a quarter million dollars in a new R&D lab at our new headquarters to double down on that process. And we are going to shrink the amount of time it takes for us to go from prototype to commercialization by as up, uh, upwards of 66%. And we're gonna decrease the amount of waste that we use by about 20%. Now, is it scalable? Absolutely. The market is big enough and we have our process flow identified. So now it's just about having the capital necessary to invest in the machinery, the equipment, and most importantly to me, the people to help us scale and grow. And we're going to do that in Maine. And guys, this is not an empty promise. And as of last Tuesday, we purchased a 7,500 square foot industrial building in Gora, Maine, because Maine is our home and we're not going anywhere. Thank you. It seems like you have a very good understanding of your market. If you were to focus your resources on a particular um, sub-segment of that very broadly defined market, uh, what would that ideal customer look like? The ideal customer for Flowfold is, is a response, like an uh, environmentally responsible and conscientious consumer. So the vast majority of our materials are still reclaimed or recycled, like our, our, our climbing mm. rope dog leashes or our sailcloth wallets. So that does shrink it down. But in general, it's, it's how the individual thinks. We've often referred to it as a millennial psychographic versus a millennial. Uh, so it is quite a large market size that wants to support the Made in America brand. I want to hear more about how your team has changed and evolved to, to really take an idea 
to the point where you are currently and how the team might change or evolve, evolve to go even further. This is your quintessential broken stoke story, right? We sold wallets out of the trunks of our car for beer money in the, to begin <laughs> with, right? Yeah. Since then, you know, we had to make that decision in 2015. Is this a hobby or is it a career? Mm -hmm. uh, and we raised a little bit of money. Uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars to go full time and to scale up into L.O. Bean. And there's a theme here with L.O. Bean. Obviously, they were our first key account. And then since then, that's when we have really steadily scaled the business up. Uh, so are you looking for people to work on the manufacturing end? Or I guess so that's one question. The other question is, tell me about the business leadership team. Yep. Like, who, who you, you, have, you have material scientists, you have a business advisor. What, what, what's the team look like? Yeah. We're for sure going to need to hire production workers. Uh, and that's absolutely on the table, as well as expanding our marketing and general accounting teams. From a leadership perspective, we're very siloed in our roles and responsibilities. So for me personally, it's all sales and operations. I basically manage all of the relationships. And then Devin McNeil, who is our CEO, handles all the HR and our accounting. He keeps our books on. He makes sure I don't give away too much free product, which I would do if it wasn't for him. <laughs> and then Charlie, he is just an absolute master behind the sewing machine and product development. I mean, he's the guy that can literally take something from a sketch on, on a napkin to a full out prototype in a day. And it blows me away every single time. The way that James is describing the executive team is interesting. So you have three people, they're all friends. Sometimes having friends as business partners doesn't always work, but the skill sets and qualities that his team has are complementary. So people are, have siloed their expertise. Some people are great at business, some people are good at the stitching, some people are, are good at managing the manufacturing components. All of those things put together make for a cohesive system of operation. So. Now it'll be about you know, expanding our board of advisors as well and our champions and our mentors and making sure that as we go from a low seven figure revenue number to 10 and $20 million in revenue, uh, that we don't sell ourselves out of business, which is, can be a problem if we don't have production scaled up. Yeah. Are you focused more on technological innovation, creating uh, more durable products with more uh, functional features? Or are you currently thinking more in terms of um, Fashion. It depends. In, in Tokyo, we're a fashion play right now. Mm -hmm. The colors, the bold and bright colors to them and the fact that it's made in America absolutely stands out and we can't keep them in inventory. Our emphasis is figuring out and being engaged with our customer and really understanding what it is that they want. And a very good example of that is we're in the process with MTI on figuring out how to invest in a software that allows us to customize products on demand with the user interface on Flowfold.com cool. because customers right now the vast majority of That's them what I need. want personalized <laughs> products. Mm -hmm. If they want fashion, you can make this thing as bold and as bright as you want. If you want to be a kind of like a little mm -hmm. bit more reserved, make it all black and then go hike Mount Katahdin. And by the way, 40% of consumers Want to, want to make sure they have a, a product that's personalized. Uh -huh. and, and about 71% of them are willing to pay a premium for it. Yeah. So that's also good from a margin perspective. With the new store in Gorham, or in the new facility in Gorham, mm -hmm. I'm imagining that the, the manufacturing is going there. Where have you been since then? I mean, what, before Gorham opened, where have you been manufacturing your goods? We still manufacture a vast majority of them within our small little shop in Scarborough right now. Oh, okay, good. Uh, but we also have co contract manufacturing in areas like Chicago and Tennessee that help us scale as well and handle the more big POs for the Urban Outfitters, the Yellow Beans, and the REIs the volumes. of our world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the volume okay. POs. Okay. I want to know how you came up with the name of Flow Fold. What does that mean? Sure. Flow Fold, mm -hmm. the literal definition, uh, Charlie is a, was an engineer in college, and um, he studied some geology. And so Flow Fold, technically, from a geological term, is over time, pressure can make rock actually flow. And, we, and that's called the Flow Fold. And for us, we always thought how kind of romantic that was is something so durable, so hard as rock can create a shape that's like a flow. And for us, we were like, let's take a material that is absolutely tough as nail and has carbon fiber and diamond fiber and all this in it, and we can create any item that we want. And flexibility. Mm -hmm. Flexibility, nice. the strength of flexibility. That is a perfect, perfect place to wrap up. Perfect. So clearly, of the companies that we've seen so far, this is the most feasible, mm -hmm. right? The, the longest track record, the, the largest sales volume. They're in eight countries. They're in L.L. Bean, working with REI. I mean, that's a pretty impressive mm -hmm. resume right there. And uh, it's also extremely innovative, right? They're using recycled materials, repurposing, you know, sail cloth, and uh, it's, it's light, it's durable, it's fashionable. I mean, it's a pretty cool product. And 
you know, they started with wallets. Yeah. Now they're on to backpacks. Now we're on to dop kits. Uh, you know, these guys are going someplace. Yeah, and I love that they're that they, you know, these are young people creating a great Maine company, mm -hmm. creating jobs in Maine and making an investment mm -hmm. in Maine mm -hmm. and committed to Maine. I think the co-branding of this is fascinating. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. what a compliment from L.L. Bean that L.L. Bean didn't insist on just putting the L.L. Bean uh -huh. label on there, but allowed Flowfold to have their uh, their logo as well. There was some hesitation when I asked about the product development philosophy they want to take forward. Um, they were not quite sure do they want to emphasize the fashion mm -hmm or they want to emphasize the functionality. And this is, a, this is an important decision because yeah. the product will appeal to different demographics and they'll market it very differently. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great question. I, I, I think, though, their GORM site might give them some guidance on that because they did indicate they were going to have a department specifically for R&D. So I think that that area will give them some real um, opportunities mm -hmm. to look and see what is the best way, whether they go fashion or whether they go technology driven. Mm -hmm. They said that they're going to allow their customers to um, create their own product online. So say, I want this to be pink yeah, and that, that to be yellow that. or or whatever. And um, Well, uh, but it's, it's a bit cosmetic. Mm -hmm. It does not reflect the philosophy. N no, it doesn't. It, but they did say that they were going to be doing that. And I wonder um, if that is how they're going to allow for that mm. additional creativity to actually come from their consumer base rather than um, from them. Because I think they started basically to create products that could really withstand, you know, hiking Katahdin. If you look at their their website, um, it's really all about, you know, extreme climbing and extreme outdoor stuff. And I think they wanted something, you know, like you said, that could be both um, flexible um, but hold up. And look how, look what's happened to North Face. North Face is a great example of a company that was highly focused on technical climbing and outdoor activities. And then all of a sudden, North Face was fashionable. That's true. Right? It branched out so into you, the... You can, yeah. You can have both. You can make the leap. Yeah. yeah. Well, some companies can do it, but there, there are plenty of examples of companies that couldn't quite make it. The Under Armour is the most visible example, mm. perhaps, mm -hmm. where they started with technological features and they couldn't compete on the fashion aspects with Puma and, and Nike. Ella Bean boots were technical, and then all of a sudden, everybody had to have They were fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> right? Then they yeah. became fashion. So. Well, this is definitely yeah. a company that is. Um, function first. Yeah, I personally find the products really appealing. I do too. Very cool. Yep. Me Despite too. being an indoor girl. <laughs> Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts. Let us help you. For almost 25 years, Maine Biz has been providing business news, information, and analysis for business owners and C-level executives in Maine, from Fort Kent to Kittery. Maine Biz serves the decision makers of Maine across multiple channels, including its flagship print digital publication, website, events, daily report, real estate insider, and weekly newsletter. Let Maine Biz help your business succeed. Inform, engage, connect. In 1972, Tom Moser committed his life's work to craft and four decades later employs 70 fine craftsmen and women in our shop in Auburn, Maine. With showrooms and customers from coast to coast and numerous awards and accolades, Tom has firmly established himself as an entrepreneurial tour de force and has proven that a life doing what you love is indeed possible. This year's winner of Greenlight Maine will win this handmade Thomas Mosier Beacon Box and $100,000. For more information about the presenters and panelists on all the Greenlight Maine shows, visit greenlightmaine.com. I was doing what I call the three bag schlep, which is super uncomfortable and totally unprofessional. So I wanted to create a solution to women carrying so much all day, every day, uh, to make a really beautiful bag that could contain everything and always look really professional and be super versatile so she could use it in all aspects of her life. Hi everyone, I'm Diana Posnikov. I'm the founder, designer, and CEO of Sophia Fimo. 
Sofia Fima is a handbag brand dedicated to organizing busy women's lives with style, confidence, and ease. I spent nearly a decade in New York working as an architect doing the infamous three-bag schlep, carrying inefficient totes from my home, to work, to meetings, to the gym, and to dinner with friends. Unfortunately, beautiful, versatile bags that are feminine, that focus on organization, are lacking in the marketplace. Women are forced to choose between athletic, masculine bags or a series of totes that just dig at our shoulders and kill our backs. Sofia Fima has combined both style and versatility for a streamlined and structured feminine bag that focuses on organization. So belongings are kept in their place and our customers are kept feeling confident to take on their day. This is our main squeeze tote. It's our most popular style. This is how the system works. This is our chief of staff organizer. It's packed and ready for a day at the office. You simply slip it into your bag, zip it, and you're good to go. When it's gym time, you grab your senior associate organizer, packed for all your workout necessities. Slips right into your bag, and you're good to go. Then when mom duty hits, you grab your momager. All the things for your littles are nicely organized. You simply uh, put it right into your bag, and you're good to go. Unlike other handbags on the market, this is a complete system that allows women to have one bag, not multiple, that can take her through life in its entirety. The handbag industry is worth $48 billion in sales revenue worldwide. The United States accounts for about $12 billion of that. Women own an average of 13 handbags and spend a minimum of $500 on them annually. So our customers find us through press, word of mouth, and social media. We're a direct-to-consumer brand, so we sell on our website, sofiafima.com, Etsy, Amazon, collaborative, in-person pop-ups, as well as our local shop in Lewiston, Maine. Since launching in November of 2017, we've been named the best-in-class work bag to keep you organized by Fast Company and best tote with organizers by New York Magazine. The Fast Company Award is an excellent award. It's basically a magazine that's for entrepreneurs and business people, and it also highlights uh, companies that are growing very fast in the U.S. market. So having that award, one, gets her exposure to other working professionals, but also could be a good advertising tool to reach other customers. In just 11 months, we've grown consistently, 30% month over month, and are on track to reach our projected sales goals for 2018. Our team consists of a series of consultants and freelancers that are really strategic with all of the initiatives that we do on a daily basis. If I were fortunate enough to win Greenlight Maine, we'd use the prize to expand our product assortment, invest in some digital advertising, and grow our local team in Lewiston. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present today. Thank you. Thank you. These are beautiful bags. Thank you. Um, you um, you're selling them at a fairly high price point relative to the market. I understand they range anywhere from about $500 to $700 as a system. Um, is your plan to bring the prices gradually down as you gain operating efficiencies, or you seek to build the brand as a kind of prestige brand, maybe on a level with Coach or even above it? Yeah, so our product is in what's called the affordable luxury category, which is exactly where Coach Tori Birch and Michael Kors are. So before launching, I did a lot of research to figure out where I needed to sit, and they are competitors in terms of price point. So the affordable luxury category is the category that grows far beyond luxury and, and lower than that. So as a direct consumer brand, my goal is to provide the most value at the best possible price to my customers. So this is the price point that we're at right now. My goal with um, the ability to produce in larger scales, I'll be able to either make a, make a better margin and hopefully be able to offer products that are a little less in price. But I produce in the States with premium Italian leathers, so I use the best possible products while supporting American craft. So the goal is to be at the price point that I'm at and, and a little bit less, but not higher. Let's talk about manufacturing. Are yeah. you actually manufacturing these in Lewiston? No, so currently I manufacture in New Jersey. Um, I work with a company that I've been working with for a few years now, which has been really great. But my, my true dream, my ultimate goal, is to have my own manufacturing facility, a true um, design-build shop where I can design with myself and my team, and we can talk to the people that are making it instantly. Um, I believe 
that supporting craft um, is really crucial to this company, to, to this country. Uh, my parents are immigrants. My dad still to this day works um, in a factory making things, and I believe I believe in it wholeheartedly. So that's definitely part of my dream is having a facility in Lewiston um, that can educate a new breed of makers. I love your dream of bringing the manu manufacturing to Maine, but that's a huge investment and you've only been in business for a short time. So can you tell us a little bit about your sales history and your trajectory? Where are you now and where are you headed? We're closing out our first calendar year at the end of this year and we've been eight, we're on track to reach our goal. Um, which is about 100,000 in sales. Okay. Um, in about three years, we'll, we'll, the goal is to be at about two million and grow from there. Um, manufacturing, you're right, it's a massive investment, and that's why sometimes I don't, it's not something that I lead with right away because there's a lot of things that need to happen before I'm at a place where, you know, we can invest in that. But that's ultimately the dream, and I think I can start to take little steps. One thing is begin offering monogramming in shop, have somebody help me with these little things and grow in a really strategic way. You mentioned, at one point you mentioned your margins. What's your markup on the bag? I have about a 55% margin right okay. now. My and goal, is that standard within the industry, do you think? Well, for direct to consumer, the goal is actually to be closer to 70. Okay. So that's ultimately my goal, and I will be able to achieve that. Um, with you know larger production runs so right now my production runs are one to 200 pieces the larger those are the better pricing i can get and and the more um you know the better terms i can kind of negotiate with my vendors for example i was just in milan visiting with my um, tannery and i was able to negotiate better terms because they see my growth and they want to be a part of my story and my brand so we're starting i see that you have a scarf there yeah. which is not not a bag. Do you have plans to expand your line beyond a bag and, a, and an insert? Uh, so right now, I mean, I would love to do so many things, but as a business owner, I have to be very strategic with where I put my, my effort and, and my thoughts. So this is really our key piece. I want to be known for the main squeeze tote. It's the perfect work bag and begin to expand to smaller pieces, maybe women who aren't necessarily carrying laptops and a lot of things. So I want to be really, really good at what I do first, which is providing women an organizational system in handbags. Once, you know, the world knows about Sophia Fima, once, you know, women are getting into college as they're graduating and they equate Sophia Fima with professionalism and excellence and career, then at that point, I would love to introduce more products. Um, my dad was a shoemaker, his father was a shoemaker, so of course there's a little bit of that, Good story. you know, what, dream what back does, there, uh, but. What does Sophia Fima mean? So Sophia is my mom and Fima is my dad. Oh. So the company is very much about my family and my roots in making. What do you see as your biggest marketing challenge, challenges at the moment? The direct consumer space is very exciting, but it is quite saturated. There are a lot of competitors out there, young brands like myself, um, but they're, they have a lot of capital. There's a good amount of capital infusion. So for example, they put, pour a lot of money into digital marketing, um, which is great and very necessary, which is what I would like to use some of this um, prize towards. Um, but it's very saturated. So for me, it's about how do I create really um, long-lasting, memorable ways of connecting with potential customers and my current customers. So we have a very grassroots effort right now. We don't have a large marketing spend. It's really referrals. Um, people who have the product are sharing it with their friends and their coworkers and all of that. So as um, you know, the digital <coughs> space keeps evolving, I would like to stay ahead of it and con continue to do what we're doing, which is being um, very true to who we are and sharing that story and not overspending on, on digital, but that's, um, yeah, that is a pain point for sure, not having the, the cash flow for, for all of those exciting things. Mm -hmm. If you were to win the Green Light Main cash prize, yeah. what would you do with the money? Yeah, so there are three major things I would do, and that's definitely continuing to expand the product category. My customers are coming back and asking for specific things, and one of those things I'm actually launching for holiday um, this season, which I'm really excited about. So continuing that product development, doing some digital marketing. We've done some in the past. We had to pause. We've learned a lot as to where we need to go, so doing a few more things, and growing our team locally. I have a shop in Lewiston, and it's me working, running the business out of a shop. I have customers coming in and they deserve my attention and it's really challenging. So I'd love somebody to run the shop and package and fulfill orders. That's me, every day packaging orders. Um, so I'd love to be able to grow the team like that in Lewiston. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
I loved her point about how many bags uh, women own, and I thought of my own closet. <laughs> yeah. And it's a little ridiculous. Um, but I love that you can, you can get these inserts, and okay, today's a work day, so I'm gonna have my work insert here, and here's my gym insert, and, and then um, with one bag and insert. I think, that, I think that that's brilliant. I just don't see bringing a $700 bag to the YMCA and throwing it in my locker. I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Fine Italian leather, you know, in the bottom of my lock. I just don't see it. And I also don't see it for a baby bag. You know, so there's three things here that she had. She's like, you know, you have your executive that you take with you to work, you have your gym, and then you have your baby. And I don't know that I put my baby stuff in there either. Those are both messy, messy things. And I, um, I have a Kate Spade and a Michael Kors that she was talking about uh, being the affordable luxury in there with Coach too. And I treat those bags pretty, pretty well. So I'm just not sure. I was impressed by the PR that she's gotten, though. Yeah. The article in uh, Fast, Fast Company. Company. Yeah. You know, that, that's some significant visibility mm -hmm. in exactly the right niche. Yeah. You know, so that affordable luxury with a target audience in, er, amongst urban, young urban professionals, that is right on. And if they're getting that kind of review, that's going to play. And to build off of that, I, I feel that her marketing game is well developed. She understands what she needs to accomplish. This is reflected in the products. And the fact that she's a direct-to-consumer brand, which means that she needs to emphasize social media and digital. Mm. And she seems to be doing that very well. Mm. I'm concerned about her margins, though. You know, it's a high-end bag, and um, it will take uh, quite a bit of tightening of the belt, if you will, to increase those margins, because she's looking at a 20, 25% increase of margins in order to meet what the local um, uh, industry standard is. So that, that'll come with volume, though. She's only right. producing one to 200 bags at a time. But at that price line, yeah. it's going to be a bit of a challenge to meet that. But as she said, her, her um, suppliers are now starting to work with her. It'll be interesting to see how that works for her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a smart Looks move like on her part. Looks like we need to kind of wrap it up. But I think those are some excellent comments. Yeah. Great. We're very proud of the product we make and the way that we make it. The most important features of our original dog vest are in its design. Traditional lenders, you know, they steer away from unproven track records. Here you come. Hold up. CEI gave us the opportunity to build a track record, show that our future path will be more solid than our past. Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts, let us help you. After intense deliberation, our judges have tabulated their individual scores and today's competitors are still in the running to make the final three. This means they may compete for the $100,000 in cash. Join us next week to see more inspiring Maine entrepreneurs. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.